Should what I you start? doing, Don? I'm uh, talking about wool applique. You got any questions about wool applique feeder? There's so many different moving parts, I don't know where to start. You know what? There's so many different ways to do it, too. Um, I'm going to show you the way I do it and maybe talk about the way some other people do it. But wool but applique is a fun technique that takes a wool that has been felted. So it's kind of been shrunk up and so the edges don't fray as much. This is a beautiful piece of herring bone, and you can see that it's not shedding. It's not uh, unraveling because it's been felted. And so when you buy um, wool from the fabric store that's not on a bolt, nine times out of ten, it's been felted, especially if you buy it in a kit. So these are the kind of things I'm talking about when I say wool applique. It's where you take little cutout shapes and you applique them on top of each other. And then you can do some fun specialty stitches to kind of even jazz them up a little bit more. You see that? See how fun that is? That's where this little book comes in handy. We have these on our website too. Uh, I carry one of these in my purse all the time because you never know when I want to have to make a stitch I'd never done before or something I haven't done for a long time and need a little reminder. So <clears throat> that's what we're going to talk about today. And one of the most controversial, I wouldn't say controversial, but the most uh, variations. Let's say variations. That's a good word, isn't it, Peter? Variations. Okay, variations is how do you get the wool pieces onto the background? Okay? So some people staple them. After they cut them out, they staple them. Well, how do you get them cut out in the shape? Well, you got to trace them, okay? So, I I don't staple them. I don't pin them. Some people pin them with applique pins. Some people use a glue stick to glue them on. I use a fusible web. Now, this fusible web that I have is called Soft Fuse, but they don't make it anymore. So what people are recommending, and I'm going to tell you right now, I've never used this uh, because I still have a stash of soft fuse. But as soon as I'm done with soft fuse, I'm going to have to find a substitute. And right now, a lot of my friends are using this. And of course, we have that on our website also. So what the technique is, is that <clears throat> I'm getting ready to start a new project here. So I open up my pattern and the first thing I want to see is is the pattern reversed or not reversed so in all these things that it says please read all the directions before you begin that's always a good idea should I say it again read all the directions before you begin yeah how many of us do that <laughs> I don't see very many hands going up Peter's hands not even going up Okay, but anyway, if you read these directions, they should tell you whether your design is reversed. Now, definitely, if you're going to do letters, you've got to reverse those. Because by the time you get the fusible on and cut it out, they're upside down. You see that? So, this design just happens to be that it is reversed. And you can see that by taking the picture here. <clears throat> See where on the design the tomatoes over here, but the tomatoes over here on the pattern So see if I flipped that over I'm gonna have that's reversed. So When I trace onto my fusible I Am glad that the pattern is reversed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put this on my light box I'm going to use a little tape here just to keep it secure from moving around. I use this blue, boy, if you don't know about blue painter's tape, you haven't lived. I use blue painter's tape for everything. Now I they, heard the best use is to put it on the table when you go to a stitching retreat. I tell you what, they were making fun of me today because when I go to a retreat, if they say you get half the table, I'm measuring out the table and I'm putting some blue tape halfway so that I'm not getting on somebody else's spot and I get to use all of my spot. So, 
good tip. Hey, that was worth the price of that admission, Dawn. That was the, worth the price of admission right there. So then I'm going to look at my pattern. I'm going to take a pencil. And I'm going to see, okay. Well, this is not a good one to do that with because it, it has all the same parts. So let me show you one. Where is it? Here's one. See how all these little leaves look the same? So I went through and numbered them. One, two, three, four. So I knew they all look the same, but they're not exactly the same. So that I knew which one, where one went, two went, three went, four went. And I go ahead and I mark that on my fusible so that when it's on my wool, I'll know which one that is. So. <clears throat> that's what I do with a pencil because that's on my original pattern that I do that. So here I don't see that I'm going to need anything because everything seems to be one of a kind. This right here is a stitch. Those little things right there, that's an actual stitch. So I don't have to do that. Okay. If I see something that I think that I don't know what it is, like this little band here, after I get going, I may not know what that band is. Sometimes also, I will get, if it's a kit, I will get my pieces of wool out and I'll get the picture. Here, I'll get the picture and I'll go in with my pencil and I'll say, okay, this is green and this is red and this is light green and this is blue and this is pink see i'm just looking and this is dark red and this is dark red so that when i get the pieces cut out then i'll know what it's for and that'll help me all right <clears throat> so to trace my pattern, I just use one of these uh, Sharpie Fine Tip Ultra Fine. I think this is an ultra, ultra fine point marker. I don't mark on my thing, but I mark on my uh, fusible, which is right here. <clears throat> and I'm not going to trace the whole thing. I'm going to trace like, okay, things that I see that are the same color. So my needle, it looks like my spool, and it looks like that spool. I wonder if those are all the same color. That, that, and that. They all look the same color. So I'm going to trace those together. So my biggest piece is this little holder that's holding the, uh, holding the tomato pin cushion. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to just trace that. Now, when I trace on my, uh, on my uh, fusible, I'm tracing on the smooth side. The side that's lumpy, that's the side that has the glue. Okay? And look at how it would be so hard to do this if I didn't have my light box. You know, you can do it the old-fashioned way and put it up on a window... Remember when we used to do that as kids, Peter? Did you ever do that uh -uh. when you were in kid when no, you were in art school and No, I were... didn't do that. You're kidding. No. Well, we used to just put uh tape it to a window or your front door and then put the fusible on there and then trace it anytime you wanted to trace them. So there's that. Now look, this stuff is not cheap, so I'm going to be very frugal. And look what I can do, is I can put that little thing right inside there. Wow, Don, you're really frugal. I'm very frugal, I must tell you. So I'm going to just trace around, and I'm going to say <clears throat> that this piece comes in front of that. But look here, where it goes behind this uh -oh. uh, needle, I'm, I'm going to cut that out exactly like that what? yes 
I'm gonna fill that in. That's really smart, Dawn. Because then when that needle gets put over there, yes. that'll still all fit in there and it won't look, I don't. Ha I won't have to get it perfect. You see that? Yep. Okay. So, and I'm gonna put that this is the top. And I'm gonna put that this one is the bottom one. You are a frugal McFrugalton. I am. That's good. And sometimes... It's good to be frugal. If my kit or the piece of wool I have, I'm not quite sure if it'll fit, I will draw... I will draw the piece. I will make little dash lines and then make sure that oh, I can trace it all inside. Now that's the worth that's the price worth of the price's mission. mission right, right there. there. So this one is the bottom. Well, and I like that you're labeling things. You can put them by color. It keeps you very organized. Uh huh. That way you don't find a piece and be like, well, what is this? Is what this is a strap it? or yeah, was this in my yeah. project? Yeah, exactly. Hello. Now I have to do the needles. So see how I'm moving it around to get it in the best position? Because I do not want. Now this is not going behind. There's a line right there of stitchery. So I don't have to make this longer because this actually is going to stop right there. And then later I'll come back and do a stitchery line right across there. And so this is the needle. Now, when I get that out, am I going to know that that's the needle? Look, it doesn't look like much. So I'm going to just write needle right there. Looks like a scrap. Yeah, so just write needle right on there. And then my other needle is up here. The other part of my needle. Now look at how. Just fits right there. Fits right there. Now see, I don't know if that's a hole or a button. Oh, they want me to put a button right there. So. If I didn't want to put a button there, and I did want there to be a hole there, I could just draw a hole there. Which I think that kind of looks more natural than having a big round button, because no, none of my needle eyes have big buttons. I don't know where they're getting their needles from. I don't know where they're getting their needles from, Peter. So see how that, when I cut this out, <clears throat> And I'm just not going to leave a lot because this stuff is expensive. I'm going to just kind of cut right to the, almost, almost to the line. And then I can just place it on my wool piece and press that down according to the manufacturer's uh, uh, specifications on the package. So see, I'd scoot that all the way down, right to the edge, right to the very edge. And then look, I'll have this nice big scrap. And listen, I save all my scraps. All your scraps? All of my scraps. Even if it's just an itty bitty thing. Did you see how small those uh, leaves were I did yeah. just on that yeah. last project? Yeah, they were small. Okay, well, what if I do another project that has something small on it? You see what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Seeing what you're saying. Okay, so then after I would iron this on, press this on, it's going to stick. And then I can start cutting out the individual oh, things. Okay. You see that? Okay. See how that works? And then you can get them out. Once you've got all your pieces cut out, then this is truly where the light box comes in handy. How am I going to get it on my fabric in the right place? How am I going to position it in the right place? I'm going to you turn guess. my pattern. just guess. Uh -huh. I'm going to turn my pattern upside down. No, you don't just guess, Peter. You don't eyeball it? No, I don't. Oh. And I take tracing paper. I have one already traced. Here it is. 
But because I've turned the pattern upside down, it's not as easy to see. Do you see that? Yeah, not as easy to see. Not as but easy to see. But you can see it still. You can still see it. Surprisingly. But if I didn't have this light box, look, oh, you wouldn't go? be able it disappeared. to see it. Yeah. So the light box makes this Are there this different brightnesses step. on this thing? I think there are. Oh, where'd my focus go? I think I've touched the button. Oh, there so. you go. Now you can really yeah, see. Yeah, now you can really see it. So then I would take this tracing paper that's really thin and any kind of tracing paper this is called golden paper i don't know if we sell this or not if we don't i'll make sure lenin gets some in that's fancy isn't it fancy and then i would draw my pattern and i'm not going to draw absolutely every single thing where'd my pen go but you know what i am going to draw them i'm going to be most careful about hmm i'm going to just kind of just outline something here I'd have this taped down if I remembered to do that. I'm not going to be real careful, but I'm just going to trace this. I'm not going to trace that. Well, maybe I will. Tell you the truth, I do usually end up tracing the whole thing just because I'm uh, very nitpicky. But what I'm really going to concentrate on are all these lines that I have to do stitchery on. And the reason being is because once I have this on here, see this is the this is right side up. Oh, it's right side up. It's right side up. So now I can see where my stitchery goes. What are these little dots all about? Are they French knots? I don't know. I'm going to look. Let's look. Where's my pattern? Here's my Where's pattern. Where's the legend? Here's my pattern. They're either French knots or buttons. I'm not sure. I'm going to put a little mark there just so I can remember. See that? Now these are berries. Those are berries. Okay, so once I get all this done, I'm not going to do the whole thing, okay? But here. Now, <clears throat> Go ahead and trace this and this, this, that. So now that I've got that traced, let's say I had the whole thing traced. Let's say I have the whole thing done. I have all the appliques on. I have them appliqued down. Now it's time to put in all these little lines. See all the little extra lines? There's a little back stitch. Here's a back stitch of a thread. Am I going to freehand that? Look at that. There's a vine with some little uh, lazy daisies. There's my French knots. You know, there's just, look at, here's a, here's a stitch, a fly stitch that goes across there. There's some little stitches in my uh, spool. Look at that. That's not even an extra piece of wool. That's just a stitch. Remember we were talking yeah. about that little yeah, thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, so it's very important to look at your, examine what you're doing, okay? But now that I have this on here, on my tracing paper, I can take my tracing paper to my big piece that I'm going to be um, putting this on. This is some cloth I'm going to be putting this on. And I can put this down and I can kind of lift up and put my wool piece right in place. So this is going to be my map. What? Yeah, this is going to be my map. And this is going to help me center it on because I can see it really good through here, right? Wow. And then I just lay this down so wow. it's right in the center. And I tape this down. And now I can lift it up. And as long as I've got it taped to the top, it'll always yep. fall down back in place. Yep. And this is where I will do that. Okay? Wow. And I get all those things in place. 
and then I take it to my ironing board oh. and that's why this is so nice because I can just unplug this and take this whole thing because it's so lightweight what? to my ironing board. I'm not going to iron on right. this. Do not iron on your Don't light do it. box. Don't, Don't do, do it, it, Ethel. <laughs> Don't do it or anybody else. But you can take it and you can slide it off. And then once it's on your ironing surface, you iron everything at once. What? Yes. Yes, isn't that fun? That's fun. Okay, so then... After that's done, now I have to do the embroidery. This is where a lot of people, where'd my little thing go? To plug this back in. You have to have it in there just right. Micro USB. There you go. Up is down and down is up. Right. Okay. All right. So once I have that done, how in the world do I know where to put these things? Well, I, my guess is you're not eyeballing it. No, I'm not going to eyeball it. Some things, I, I mean, I could eyeball that. Oh, okay. But if you're not, it, and I did eyeball that, but if you're not, <laughs> if you're not um, savvy on that, on eyeballing. See, here were some needles sticking out. They don't have the needle heads on their buttons. And then this big long thing, and then here's one on the S if you want to get that curve just right, and the wing. This is where you take this stuff. It's called press and seal. Now, press and seal is found in your grocery store with the wax paper and the freezer paper and the aluminum foil, all that. When you tear it off, it sticks down to your pattern. It just sticks right on it. Get it smooth if you can. Get it as smooth as possible. There you go. So now I'm going to draw this heart. And then I'm going to draw this real careful. I didn't draw my heart real careful because I'm just going to use it for positioning. Positioning. And then I'm going to do this. Because if you don't feel comfortable freehanding this. Okay, there. So there's that. <clears throat> I've already finished this one, so let me show it to you. So you see this big vine here? Mm -hmm. How am I going to freehand that? I mean, that it all has to connect and kind of go in, in a smooth direction. Well, all I did was trace it onto my press and seal, lined it up with the design, and look, it sticks to your project. Wow. And you can stitch right through it. You can stitch right through it. It's like hardly anything. And when you stitch through it, then it puts the design right where you need it to be. And then you can just tear it real carefully so you're not disturbing your stitches. And it peels right off. It's like magic. It's like magic. It is magic. So that's how I got this vine. See now, the vine doesn't look anything like this because this is backwards. See that? Mm-hmm. So how I got that mine was from my tracing that I did on my tracing paper. See, here's my tracing paper. See that? And here's the vine. And so when I went to get my press and seal, and I don't, I don't do the whole thing. 
I do it in sections because I don't want this press and seal moving on me. But look, if I hadn't had that heart on there, let me put it down here. Okay. So it sticks right to this paper. Let me get all this out from under me. The press and steel sticks. I can trace this. I can trace this. I can trace this. And then I'd come down and do this one on another thing. I wouldn't try to get a whole big thing. That's an awful lot of waste. You see what I'm saying? So I'm just going to trace this, this, and this. And then I would, uh, after I got done uh, stitching that on, and you got to do this after all the wool pieces are on and stitched down, okay? You save your embroidery for last. You save your stitches, your uh, decorative stitches for last. So um, then I would kind of like tear this off and then just get a little piece of my, of my press and seal for right there. And so then I could just put it right where it goes, right here. And then if I had traced that big long one, see, that's where I could have put it. And I would have known where it went. And that's how I did that. And then I, I stitched right through the press and seal. And then just gently pulled that off and it just came off. Now, sometimes it doesn't come off in the itty bitty spots. So I, use, I always have a pair of tweezers in my uh, wool box so that I know that if there's one little thing that gets stuck or sometimes even when I have little bitty pieces that are too big, too little for my fingers, I will, once I've got the fusible on, let's say like this piece right here goes right here. I also could use my tweezers to put that on where I need it to go. So if the piece is too little for me to actually do it with my fingers, then I can use my tweezers for that. And I always just keep my tweezers right in my little wool box. Now, my little wool box is just one of those pencil things from the Walmart or from wherever you get your pencil things. And uh, <clears throat> I just keep everything for one project in one of these. And if the project's bigger, of course I have to have a bigger pencil box. But if the project's little, like everything I'm doing for this project is, and this is a fun project. This is a, a buttermilk basin. I don't think we have it in stock, but we could get it if you needed it. It's a sewing month by month thing. But anyway, where was I going? Oh, all the different things that I use. So like, if you really want your stitches to show, do them in a contrasting color. If you don't want them to show so much, use a color that's super duper close. What you're stitching, the color of the item that you're stitching. But see like this, you want that to really stand out. But did you really want this to stand out that's going around it? If I did, I could have used that dark red to stitch that on. But I didn't really, I wanted this to kind of stand out. See that? Now my leaves, I just kind of wanted them to just fall to the back. So I really got the close uh, thread to go with that. And what kind of thread am I using? Anything that works. That's the kind of thread I'm using. Most of the time I'll use a 12 weight Valdani thread, either in a non-variegated or in a variegated. And these are just little hair ties. I mean, hair clips. That's worth the price of it. Right there. I'm telling you. It's another right one. there. So they're all down in here. Sometimes I forget to put them back on like this one. To keep your little box nice and neat. You don't want threads everywhere. Look at that black thread just to hanging out. You just get one of these. I have a whole big little contain. A whole big little. A whole big little container of these. A whole big little container. Uh-huh. You can get them at the dollar store or wherever. And you just clip that and it keeps the ends from going all over the place. I've used number 12 weight Val, uh, Sulky Thread, which is a nice weight thread. I've been known to use floss. And um, when I use floss, I can use anything from six strands up to one, I mean down to one strand. So if I've got something really, 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 really tiny that I need to stitch, I might go down to one strand and that's I'll show you something I did with that. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, see this little bitty pin head? I just used one strand of this variegated. It didn't variegate very much because I didn't need very much of it. And I only, and I used this 12 weight Valdani, I think. Where'd that Valdani spool go? I mean that sulky spool. Oh, here. Because it's a little bit thinner than my wool, my 12 weight wool. So I used it on that because look at how little that is. See that, how close that goes in? Then I think I also used it on my needles there. But it's a thinner, it's, it's a much thinner um, weight than my Valdani. Look at how thick my Valdani is. I don't know if you can see the difference, but there's quite a difference. So according to how much you want it to show, there's no really one formula for what you can use to do to do the embroidery with or to do the the uh, buttonhole stitch and you're gonna buttonhole stitch every piece down. Maybe you just want to whip stitch everything down. You don't want to do a decorative stitch. You'd rather just whip stitch. That's perfectly fine too because the unless it's a very loose woven wool, then it shouldn't come apart on the ends. If it's loose, you may have to do something on the edges, like a buttonhole stitch. Okay? But see how I did a little bit of a contrast there on my green so that that kind of would show up? And then the little uh, daisy, lazy daisy stitches, so cute. But for all this, see, I used my... Um, What's that called again? Uh, uh, press seal, and seal. Press seal and press. seal. I put the press and seal. I did the. Uh, I probably freehanded that. But the press and seal. I de I definitely did these with the press and seal. This with the press and seal, and that with the press and seal. And probably that little that little line there too. I did with the press and seal. So. Phew, if you have any questions, you can uh, call Peter. He can he can answer some of your questions. I'm here on Mondays and Fridays. I can answer some of your questions. And have we done any other uh, applique classes? We'll applique uh, tutorials on the line on the web. Um, I think we have. I, I don't know how in depth they were, but you can check it out. Yeah. Check out our playlist. But if you don't have a light box and you're looking to invest in one, this brand is the Bee's Knees. Nifty, what do we call it again? The Nifty Notions. Nifty Notions. Here's the little one. This one is eight and a half by 11. And it's on our website. So check it out on our website. It also comes with a cutting mat. So if you're having a hard time seeing your fabric and your ruler and you need some light underneath you, right here's your answer. It's got a cutting mat for both sizes. This size is an 11 by 17, which is the size that I own right there. And it is a, um, what do you call those things, the, this kind of plug, Peter? One of them. USB plugs or whatever. Yep, micro okay. micro USB. It comes with a cord, but it doesn't come with the thing that plugs it into the wall. It doesn't yeah. come with this little block thing the power here. Power block. So you'd have to have one of these, and I think I have like 30 of them around the house, you know, because they're always, uh, they come with everything except for this light box. I don't know why they don't come with the light box, but they don't. And then... It comes in this nice carrying case. So you keep all your stuff together. And even when I'm not taking it somewhere, I store it in this because you don't want it to get stepped on, cracked, scratched up. You know, it's just it's one of those things that you, once you invest the money, you want to uh, keep it nice and neat and safe. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to call the shop. Somebody will be able to help you. And... Uh, that's all I know about wool applique for today. Thanks. Bye.